farm scouting. I think it's the most fun you can have on the farm. Hi, I'm Doug O'Brien. I'm a PhD plant pathologist. And with Jessica Vaughn, I've been developing ecological methods for farm scouting for over 25 years. We call these methods whole farm scouting. Today, I'm gonna to show you the basic techniques. Now, why do I use the words whole farm? Well, it's because I'm not just looking for pests to kill, I'm doing a deep dive into the farm's health and ecology. I scout each farm two or three times per week. I keep digital searchable records of much more than just pests. The result is a deep, long-term ecological understanding of the farm and the farmer. So who is this type of scouting for? Well, if you want to minimize pesticide use, if you can do your own spraying and fertilizing, and this would be rather than needing a full service pest control advisor company to do everything for you. If you grow many small blocks of just a few acres or less, and you want comprehensive, long-term, digital, searchable information, whole farm scouting should work pretty well for you and your farm. You don't need to hire professional scouts like me. Farmers could do it themselves or train an employee and serious home gardeners can do it too. Having many crops and blocks to scout can feel overwhelming, but my goal today is to give you the confidence to scout all your blocks frequently, intensively, efficiently, and effectively. And the key principle is to concentrate. You don't want to be uh, distracted by things and you're simultaneously expecting the expected and also expecting the unexpected, which are two very different things, but you've got to keep them both in mind at the same time. Uh, I do a three-tier scouting approach. We start looking far, then we look near, and then we look close. Looking far is the simplest and the quickest, and so this happens as you're approaching the field. You approach the field and you're scanning and you're looking for anything unusual. Um, any abnormalities that you can see widely across the field is where you're going to head, but you're not gonna head for them directly because you wanna make sure that you're seeing everything you possibly can. And in this block, for example, uh, we can see Way over on the right corner there, uh, an area where the plants look to be smaller, there's some holes, and so we're ultimately going to want to head up there uh, as we uh, move into the field. The second part of, the, um, of scouting is looking near, and this is entering the field. So, the goal is to see as much new area as you possibly can in the shortest possible time. One of the things we do is we vary the entry points. So last time I was at this block, I would have entered over from the other end. Today I'm going to enter from this end. We keep track of that because again, we want to see as much new area as we possibly can and make sure we're not concentrating on a small area rather than the whole field. One of the things we try and do is choose, as we're entering the field, is we try and choose the border where things are different. So we have two different varieties of eggplant here. So I'm going to enter the field between these two varieties rather than entering over here where it's the same variety. It just gives me a chance to look at more stuff. So I figured out where we're going to go and now it's time to start entering and I'm beginning to look uh, near as I'm entering the field and already I can see some insect damage. I'm still looking near and I'm looking at quite a few plants as I'm walking in, um, looking, seeing insect damage and we're going to be looking at that uh, more closely in a minute and I'm heading for the area where we identified when we looked far. We found these missing plants here. We see what looks like gopher holes but we haven't seen the gopher yet. Um, I want to move to looking at the whole field. There may be other problems here. We had those insect holes. So uh, when we're looking close, there's a lot of things going on. It's a lot of stuff to be looking at. We're looking for pests. We're looking for diseases. We're looking for enemies of pests. Uh, we're looking at the overall plant physiology and development, water issues, soil, uh, even harvesting quality. Uh, it's a lot. And one of the 
really important parts about farm scouting is to knowing what to mention and what to let go. And um, a few plants missing to a gopher is something we might let go. The whole field being attacked by a bunch of insects or something coming in early, that's something we really want to make a note of. So there's a lot to look at at plants when you're looking at them close, uh, but you want to choose the most important things. Some of the things that we're looking at are the growing tips. You got to spread the leaves apart to see that. Uh, we are also looking at the undersides of leaves. We've looked at a lot of the upper side as we walked in, but we didn't look at any of the undersides, so we want to do that. Um, we will sometimes be looking at the roots. And really important is to make sure you have a knife with you so you can look at the uh, a cross-section of the roots. There's a lot of plant diseases that are more easily diagnosed when you look at the roots like this. The other thing that's important and one of the differences between whole farm scouting and regular scouting is we actually want to get an objective sample. And an objective sample is something like in a uniform field choosing 20 plants perhaps. Uh, and if you choose 20 plants it means that you have about a 5% chance of missing something that's there. If you choose 10 plants, it's about a 10% chance of missing something. So there are a bunch of tools you can use during your scouting. Some of them you use almost all the time, some of them almost never. The thing I use all the time is my uh, big, uh, big knife here. It's not very sharp, but I can use it to to dig and I can use it to cut plants and um, it's just a very efficient way of sampling destructively but effectively. Other items, a lot of people like a shovel. I like something really light like this. Uh, you can sharpen your shovel and use it like a knife. Um, I tend to keep the shovel in the pickup and go and get it when I think I have uh, something I need to shovel, but for other people they can use it like a knife. Something I don't use very often, but um, can be really helpful, and actually, particularly in this field where we can see all the insect damage, but we haven't seen the insects yet, is a sweep net. And usually we do about 25 sweeps through the field. Um, you can probably see a demo of that somewhere else uh, and see what you get. And it's very fascinating to see what's in a sweep net because not only do you get insect pests, but you also get a lot of insect natural enemies. Magnification is particularly important when you're dealing with small things like mites. Um, this fits right over your head and um, is really good for doing uh, mite counts. And for something really small, a hand lens like this, get one that has a light and um, pretty good magnification and this can get you down to some of the very small mites like russet mites. We're finished looking at the eggplant and I've entered the uh, relevant data into my phone. Um, I use a Google Sheet. Uh, there are a number of different ways you can do this but we do want to keep a digital record. And now it's time to move on to something else. We have uh, peppers over here and uh, we have two choices. We could walk out of the eggplant field, come around and back through into the pepper field, or we could move laterally. And when you have small blocks of maybe 12 beds or less, uh, moving laterally is by far the most efficient way to do it. So let's head into the peppers and we can review uh, the main scouting techniques. So here we are in the peppers, and I'm just going to go over what we've learned today so far. Um, the three main parts of the scouting technique. And as you remember, first we look far. So I'm going to look down the field. I'm going to look up the field. I'm going to try to identify an area where I want to end up in, or at least pass by, that looks unusual. And that's really all there is to far. As I'm walking, I will be looking near, and that means that I'm looking at a bunch of different plants as I'm walking down. Uh, and then finally, when I get to a, a spot, a sort of a random spot, I'll be doing my representative sample of maybe 10 or 20 plants where I'll be looking at them closely. Undersides of leaves, 
the apical growing stem. If it looks like it's a root disease or something, I might be uprooting plants and looking at the roots. Working with these basic techniques of looking far, near, and close, I think you can really improve your scouting, make it fast, efficient, and effective.